Back in... The team gathers to make some scientific sense out of their... Back in Denver, the team gathers to make some scientific sense out of their spectacular sprite footage. The halo above and the elf below. And that's just because it's expanded out front. At first glance, this sprite may seem to burst up from the storm clouds towards space. But when seen by the high-speed camera, the movement looks completely different. Bursts of light appear out of the center spreading both up and down. In fact, when examined in slow motion, it appears that sprite formation is more complicated than early reports had indicated. And what about this sprite shaped like angel's wings? With this one too, bursts of light suddenly appear out of darkness. They go down, and the next moment up, and then down again. They change their direction as they unfold. So what is really happening? Within the sprite, electrons are colliding with charged particles in the atmosphere, creating a pathway for the electrons to travel. Where they go depends on the concentration of electrons and the composition of the atmosphere. Sprites are beautiful and intriguing. But do they actually have a role to play in Earth's upper atmosphere? Yukihiro Takahashi is investigating the aftermath of a sprite. Once the electrons cut open a path, the atmosphere around it becomes highly electrified. Following the sprite's path, a large electric current continues to flow from the thundercloud to the ionosphere which shows up as the air glow in many sprite images. The sprite flashes only for an instant, but at the moment when it flashes, a conductive path is created. The electrified path doesn't disappear when the flash ends, but stays there for a while. The effects are thought to last several seconds to minutes. The result is a massive transfer of electric charge in the space between the cloud and the ionosphere. The team also successfully captured a sprite from different angles, as they had originally planned, using high-speed cameras placed on the two aircraft. By combining the images from the two cameras, the three-dimensional structure of the sprite becomes apparent. A large number of electrons collide with the atmosphere, creating brilliant bursts of light and opening channels where the electrons can flow. Each sprite channel can be hundreds of yards wide. A sprite event is like a switch that turns on an electric current in the space between the Earth and the ionosphere. In fact, our planet is surrounded by electric current from the surface to the edge of space. Like lightning, sprites help to complete a global circuit allowing charge to flow continuously around the Earth. But sprites reach much farther than lightning and unlike lightning, sprites can transfer charge into the ionosphere, to the edge of space. Not only that, but the bolts of lightning that create the sprites are so powerful that they literally reverberate around the world. When a sprite occurs, the parent lightning that causes the sprite radiates electromagnetic waves. Those waves propagate in what we call the global circuit. Earl Williams of MIT studies sprites from this remote laboratory in western Rhode Island. Williams and his equipment are nearly off the grid out here, but they're completely plugged into the biggest circuit of all, the global electric circuit. We've been monitoring this phenomenon for nearly two decades at this site, trying to look for long-term trends, 
In fact, scientists have actually been measuring the global electric circuit on this unusual site since the 1950s, when the lab was set up by William's predecessor, Charles Polk of the University of Rhode Island. Yeah, the antenna immediately behind me is Charles Polk's. The, f the more distant antenna is one that we constructed when Polk's antenna was struck by lightning and moved the antenna into many separate fragments all over the meadow we're sitting in right now. Williams got involved with early Sprite research by collaborating with Walt Lyons of the Yucca Ridge Field Station. Every time Walt saw a Sprite in Colorado, which is roughly 2,000 miles from here, uh, we would see a big disturbance here in Rhode Island. The antenna Williams is using measures a very low frequency wave, like a steady hum that resonates between the Earth and the ionosphere. When a sprite occurs, the lightning that causes the sprite sends waves in that thin cavity around the world two or three times. And it, it is exciting something called the Schumann Resonances. And the Schumann Resonances is a manifestation of what we call the AC Global Circuit. Earl's aunt was a prominent violin player, so it's not too surprising that he thinks of it in musical terms. The vibration of a violin string is very much like what happens with Schumann resonances. We have a fixed string length, and there's one wave on the string which is, has a fixed frequency, say the A note of 440 hertz. For Schumann resonance, we have a fixed length, but the length wraps itself around the world. And for that fixed length and the speed of light, we have a fixed frequency of eight cycles per second. So they're both examples of, of resonances, this one being a mechanical resonance, that one being an electromagnetic resonance, but the same wave phenomenon applies. It's almost like the music of the spheres, or of the Earth, at least. No matter where you are on Earth, if you have an antenna, a vertical antenna, like the one behind me, you will see an oscillation on that antenna at roughly eight cycles per second. And that is maintained continuously by all the lightning on the planet. Every time there's a lightning flash, a small fraction of the energy in that lightning flash feeds into this global resonance. The Schumann resonance is present all the time. It never dissipates because there's always lightning someplace on Earth. And when a sprite is produced by a superbolt of lightning, there is a spike in the Schumann resonance signal. Every sprite lightning is a bell ringer for the Schumann resonances. One of these giant lightnings will single-handedly excite the whole Schumann cavity with electromagnetic waves. And everyone on Earth who has a receiver in the range of frequency of eight cycles per second will detect a sprite event. Here on the oscilloscope, we have an example of the Schumann resonance signals. You can see the characteristic eight cycle per second oscillation continuously. That's called the background Schumann resonances. Occasionally, you'll see a big increase in the amplitudes. Those events are the events that make the sprites. These are the lightning flashes, the very energetic lightning flashes that create um, sprites in the thin upper atmosphere. Earl's science may be cutting edge, adding to our understanding of planet Earth. But his equipment is a little bit old school. But because the Schumann resonances oscillate at only eight cycles per second, it is kind of a low-tech operation here. I mean, we, we do digital recording of the signals, but it's, but, you know, these are, these are very low-frequency signals you could put on an oscilloscope, and you don't need high bandwidth equipment to record them. But you have to be in a quiet place. You can't do this in the middle of a city. There's too much background noise. And that's why we're out here in this very beautiful site in the middle of nowhere. And super powerful lightning produces not only sprites, but other weird phenomena as well. There are actually a whole zoo of, of creatures up there that are caused by lightning. But there's something called an owl, and it's like a pancake of light within the air glow layer. And it's caused by the radiation field from lightning. Then there is a halo, which is also a pancake shape, but at somewhat lower altitude. And then there are blue jets and pixies and a whole host of other optical phenomena that occur in conjunction with lightning flashes. Since the Schumann resonance fluctuates slightly depending upon factors such as the temperature of the Earth, 
Williams thinks it's one important way of measuring the health of the whole planet. It's a natural setup for looking at the entire Earth. You have one quantity which represents the entire planet. And it's hard to dream up another such circumstance. It is like taking the EKG of the planet. The global electric circuit surrounds everything on Earth and connects us to the edge of space. Sprites feed into the ionosphere from below. But from above, the sun also affects the ionosphere, resulting in the vivid displays of the aurora borealis.